Hi there, welcome back to Microsoft Fabric Certification Tutorial. In this episode, we are going to talk about scalability in Microsoft Power BI. This is episode 15 and my name is Ajay Kumar. There's something about me. So if you would like to read more about me, please pause your screen, read it over here. Otherwise, you can also connect with me on LinkedIn or on our YouTube channel. Perhaps you have heard about that Microsoft Power BI can seamlessly handle trillions of rows of data, but you are not able to accomplish that in your own Power BI tenant and you always face a lot of performance issues over there. Working with high volume and large scale of data can be done with Power BI, but only when you are going to do it in the right way. This is the same thing I talk to everyone whenever we handle a large amount of data. So in order to do that, you have to do some groundwork and for that, we have to understand scalability in Microsoft Power BI. How you can literally handle trillions rows of data in Microsoft Power BI. So in this module, we are going to first discuss about importance of building scalable data models. Then we are going to go with Power BI data modeling best practices. And at last, we are going to get to know about Power BI large dataset storage format. What is it and how you can enable it. going to talk about importance of building scalable data models and one of the key aspect of this is the good data model design so we will discuss what is enterprise or large scale data what is scalability and why it, why it's important and how do i design the scalability now let's discuss over here what is enterprise or large scale data well before we talk about scalability you should know that it's very important we define it you will see throughout this tutorial that we are going to refer the enterprise scale and large scale data rather than I'm calling it a big data. So enterprise scale and large scale data basically refers to the table with a large number of records or rows. For example, your fact table, your fact table has billions of rows of data. So we are going to call it a large scale or enterprise scale data. Power BI used with tools, for example, Azure SNPs Analytics or maybe Databricks which can analyze massive data sets in the range of trillions of rows of data or probably even the petabytes it can go. Now, if you're similar working with enterprise data, then it may be helpful for you to understand that Power BI is the next generation analysis services. It is the same technology under the hood for Azure analysis services and Power BI data sets and the technology name is VertiPack Engine. If you would like to know more about the VertiPack Engine, please leave the comment in the comment section or Q&A section and we will get back to you. Furthermore, we are going to talk about what is scalability and why it is important. This is very important question that you should ask to yourself. What is it and why do you want to scale your data set or maybe your Power BI? Scalability always refers in the context of building your data model or semantic models that can handle growth in the volume of data. For example, you are working in an organization where your user database is increasing day by day then we are going to call it a scalability and you should be able to handle that growing data or the large volume of the data that is increasing day by day or exponentially. A data model that ingests thousands of rows of data may grow to millions or billions or even petabytes of data. Then the model must be designed to accommodate such growth or in other words, we can say that it should be scalable. So. It is really very critical that you consider that how your data is going to grow and whenever it's going to grow, it is also going to increase the complexity. Now, scalability must be the forefront of any enterprise solution. Over here, we are going to ensure three things. Number one, flexibility. And what is it? Flexibility means that models need to be able to accommodate any kind of change that you can expect or you cannot expect it. Secondly, data growth. Models must be able to handle increased data volume with acceptable report performance. Your performance should not get impacted over there. Last but not least is the reduced complexity. You should not make it too complex. Your model built with scalability in mind with less complex and easier to manage with a higher performance. So all these factors are really important for you to consider whenever you are going to work with this. After that, we are going to talk about how do I design for scalability. Now we are going to talk about designing for scalability. Microsoft Power BI comes with the different kinds of licenses. One is Pro, 
which gives you certain features but it's not really good for the enterprise level solutions because it has certain limits over there however power BI premium is a scalable solution so if you are going to go beyond the general limit which is in microsoft power bi pro which is just 10 gb of data maximum you can have it in a semantic model then you need to go for microsoft power bi premium which was designed specifically for enterprise developments power bi premium offers greater storage capacity and allows for larger individual data sets depending on the sq that you are choosing on this screen you can see now the different sqs of power bi premium as well as microsoft fabric sqs and there is a comparison Please do note that whenever you are working with Power BI Premium, then those were being associated with Power BI only. But since Power BI is just becoming one of the experience in Microsoft Fabric, so these PSQs soon gonna be converted into SSQs, depends on your enterprise agreement with Microsoft Fabric. Starting from around June 2024, all the PSQs are gonna go away and only FSQs are gonna be there. Another important consideration in designing your scalability using Power BI Premium is choosing the right capacity. So you should know how much is going to be the load over there. You will need to work with your Power BI admin to determine which Power BI Premium licensing SQs is available for you. However, since I worked in my organization and we have a lot of PSQs over there because we handle petabytes of data over there. So we do use monitoring in, inside our Power BI tenant and for that we use Fabric Capacity Monitoring app over there. So which is going to give us basically an idea how to monitor our capacities load over there. And that's going to help us to determine whether we are going to need the new capacities or PSQs or not. So always work with your Power BI admin who's going to help you out with this one. Power BI Premium Capacities comes with a lots of additional advanced features as well. So you can take advantage of those different features in terms of performance, in terms of scalability, whenever you are designing solution for your own organization. At the most basic level, it is very important to understand Power BI Capacities require sufficient amount of memory for processing your data. And processing means it can be related to when users are querying the data or it can be related to when you are refreshing the data. Always Power BI operations are divided into two parts. One is the front end, another is the back end. For example, I'm a user and I'm gonna go on Microsoft Power BI service and I'm just trying to view the reports like uh, slicing and dicing, etc. So this is known as front end operation. However, loading the data or refreshing the data for your cementing model is gonna be your background operation. If you are already using capacity utilization metrics app, then you may be aware about it, what I'm talking about over here. The most important part over here that you should remember is that whenever you refresh the data, always your capacity, uh, capacity size should be double the size of your semantic data model. For example, if you have a data set or your semantic model of 40 GB, then you will need at least 80 GB of memory available. A 40 GB data set would be the best support by P3 or A6 capacity, which you can see on the screen as well, which contains 100 GB of memory. If you need to know more information about it, please don't forget to let us know. Now we are going to talk about Power BI data modeling best practices. I always tell everyone that, hey, whenever you are going to work with Microsoft Power BI, you should spend your 80% of the time on designing the data model. That is the core solution over there. If it's not good, then your report is not going to be good, no matter how aesthetically you are going to make it good. First of all, you should choose the correct Power BI model framework. And what does that mean? That means the storage mode that you're gonna use. Microsoft Fabric comes with a number of storage mode. For example, import, direct query, live connection, composite, etc. You have to pay attention when you really need to use what kind of mode. In general, import mode is the fastest mode over there. However, if you think that you don't want to ingest all the data in memory of Microsoft Power BI, then you may go for the composite or direct query. Use this direct query mode only when you want data almost in real time and also your fact table size is huge and you don't want to get all the data over there. However, there are a couple of ways that you can also use the import mode in this case. When you have a large amount of data, you can enable the incremental refresh over there. You can do the partitioning, etc. But as I said, it totally depends on your own expertise and how you are going to handle the data. Composite mode is also very useful. For example, you are getting data from the multiple sources or you want to implement a model where 
you are using a shared data set also you want to add your additional data set so choosing the right model should be your most important task whenever you are designing your data model next to that is the best practices about the import mode on your screen you can pause the screen and have a look but in general you should do pre-aggregation of data before loading you should not load data with a large cardinality you should also avoid many-to-many -many relationship one of the core features that i highly recommend for everyone to disable auto date time that you can do under the settings options and settings and go there do it for your current report as well as for your all other global reports over there so always you find the two settings global and the local one so please choose it carefully Partition and incremental refresh, I already told you, please go with that and try to avoid the white tables. Always try to stick with star schema. You can incorporate multiple fact tables over there, but try to stick with the star schema. Now it's coming to the point where you have to implement data modeling best practices. They are best practices for import as well as direct query and for composite as well. So here are some of the best practices for import mode. You can pause your screen and have a look, but the most important are that you should try to reduce the cardinality. You should try to reduce the white tables, do the pre-aggregation and always try to push all the calculation as much as possible to the upstream or at the source. You should also not use any bi-directional unless it's required or many to many relationships over there. The one very important best practice that I would like to highlight is disabling auto date time. You can go to options and settings on your Power BI desktop app over there whenever you are designing a report or a data model or a semantic model, please do disable it. Last but not least is you should check the partitioning and incremental refresh. Once again, I'm telling you this and try to enable query folding. Otherwise, you may have the performance impact over there. Similar to that, there are some of the best practices for direct query. In the direct query, I'll simply say one thing that you should not do anything in Power BI. Always do your all the calculations, everything at the source side. And source means maybe your analytical data layer or your data mart or your data warehouse. Try to do that. If you will do that, you won't get any performance issues and ask your data modeler or data engineer to improve the performance over there. Then there are certain best practices in Power BI. If you are doing everything in Power BI, you can check it over here. You can pause your screen and have a look. Now coming to the point, configuring the large data set. And what is it? Well, whenever your data set or semantic model size is increasing or going beyond 10 GB, it becomes a large data set. And in that case, you should be very much careful about the performance. Thankfully, Microsoft has a lot of best practices in that and they have implemented a lot of functionality at Microsoft side that is going to help you to improve the performance. Large data set configuration is one of them. So this is going to help you automatically improve the performance of your data sets. In order to enable it, you can do it at two places. First, at the data set level, as well as at the workspace level by default, then it's going to enable for all the data sets that you are going to put over there. So let me show you how you can do that. Currently, I'm on my Power BI service. Over here, if I'm going to create any new workspace, I'm going to give it a name, test large dataset format. You can give it any name. But when you would go to the advanced settings and you would go at the bottom, here you are going to find one option, semantic model storage format, small semantic model storage format or large. Data set or semantic model is the same thing. So whenever you are going to select this large semantic model storage format, then what's going to happen? Once this workspace is going to get created and you are going to publish any of the semantic model or data set in this data sets in this workspace, then all are going to be by default large data set format. If you would like to read more, please click over here and you are going to get all the information over there. I'm going to provide you all the link in the description section or maybe in the Q&A section. So please don't forget to check them out. Another option is that you can directly go to a semantic model. You can directly go. Another option is that you can directly go to your workspace. For example, if I'll go to the demo one, and there I'm going to try to find a data set. For example, this one here, you can go to the settings and there also you can enable the large data set format, which is there, large semantic model storage format. It's enabled by default. So these were two options where you can enable large data set storage format. Thank you so much guys for watching this module. I'm going to see you in the next module.